Hello and welcome back. My name's Andrew Kelly from Festival of Ideas. I'm delighted to have with us today, Michael Tubbs, Mayor of Stockton. Michael, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Michael, one of your calls for action is upset the setup. Is guaranteed income part of that? A hundred percent. When we say upset the setup, we're really speaking to the idea that the outcomes we complain about are from deliberate policy choices. These aren't random happenstance coincidences. These are the logical outcomes from, from, from structures and investments. Um, and I think a guaranteed income disrupts that because it leads to a path where there's no scarcity. It leads to a path where everyone has an income floor. And it helps mitigate some of the effects of discrimination in the labor force in the workplace. So, so tell us about Stockton and the particular issues you're facing as a city that guaranteed income will, will help will help Stockton, contribute to solving. Yeah, yeah. Stockton is the most diverse city in the United States. Um, meaning every ethnicity is in Stockton. In fact, the oldest Sikh temple in North America is in Stockton. And with that diversity comes a lot of strength. Uh, but not because of the diversity, but in addition to the diversity, we have a lot of challenges. So the poverty rate in the city is about 22%. Um, the median household income is $46,000 for a household, meaning the mid individual median income is lower. Um, about 50% of all jobs are minimum wage or just above minimum wage. So real structural issues with the economy. And that's what led me to embrace a guaranteed income. Number one, to show how it's a policy that works for all of us, and not just for them. Um, number two, um, to really deal with the impacts of economic insecurity or the fact that my folks are working harder than ever but still are unable to pay for basic necessities like shelter and healthcare and food. Um, and, and then number three, to really model um, for this nation that you can trust, or for the United States, excuse me, that you can trust all citizens, including those who may struggle a little bit financially, to make the right decisions for themselves and their families with money. Now, you're, you were elected in 2016. Um, you grew up poor in, in Stockton. What would a guaranteed income have done for you and your family if it had been in existence then? A guaranteed income would have made a world of difference. It would have allowed my mother to stop going to predatory cash advance places a little bit earlier. It would have allowed her to have some savings, um, not just for me to go to college, but for herself. Um, and that she worked so hard, but was always paycheck to paycheck. It would have let, meant that she didn't have to, I didn't have to have, shadow her at work on the weekends while she did outreach jobs that she could have been home and rested. It would have meant she could have taken care of herself and her health and take mental health days or take wellness days and go to the spa. Um, I never saw my mom ever go to the spa or get her nails done or do anything that so many people take for granted. Um, and I think it would have meant she would have been even an even better parent as she would have been less stressed, less anxious, um, less worried about how to make the ends meet. Now, you, you, um, you're quite well advanced with the pilot program that you've been running on, on basic income. Can, can we talk about this in a, in a little bit of detail? Can you, can you first of all say how far you are along with the program yeah, and how are, many people are involved? Yeah, we are 21 months um, <laughs> in, into the program. Um, we started in February of 2019 and a randomly selected group of 125 families who represent the city I've been given $500 a month since um, February. And what we've seen throughout even pre-COVID times was folks were, folks were using the money the way you and I and those watching this wonderful festival use money because uh, they're human, just like us, um, because they are us. And, and what was most interesting, Andrew, however, was during COVID-19, when we saw that the guaranteed income was a, was a real lifeline, particularly for people who were told not to go to work but didn't have paid time off, particularly for people who were told um, to wait for unemployment insurance. Although, because in the States you have to wait for unemployment insurance, although the bills weren't waiting. Uh, we heard from workers that said that $500 was enough for them to actually stay home, but they probably would have still went to work and possibly exposed countless other people because they needed to work to live. Um, and I think that's what's made this such a, um, issue I mean, I'm now an evangelist for, because we live in a time of pandemics. And if it's not COVID-19, it's, it's an earthquake, if it's not an earthquake, it's some sort of fire, but there's gonna be this disruptive events and a guaranteed income allows everyone to at least have the bare necessities to build resilience, which is necessary during these times. 
I read a recent interview with you in the in the New York Times where you said you'd actually been quite moved by the experience of people benefiting from this scheme. Yeah, because when you think about it, Andrew, and even someone who grew up in poverty, but being not rich, but at least comfortable, I know my bills will be paid every month. Um, you underestimate just how important 500, like $500 would be nice for me, but it wouldn't be a lifeline. But for so many people in my community, $500 is literally the difference between having dentures or not, mm. the difference between paying tutoring for your kids or not, the distance between going to the doctor or not, the difference between working two jobs or not, right? Or the difference between being evicted or not. Um, and that has just moved me. And also I've been moved with how creative and resilient folks are with the money. Like one gentleman, Tomas, used the money to take time off to interview for a better paying job. And he said he couldn't do that before because if he took time off, that meant money out his pocket because he doesn't have paid time off or he didn't have paid time off. And stories like that just remind me that the issue isn't, at least in the States, the issue isn't with the American people. The issue is with some of the choices of American politicians and also just the fact that our economy does not work for working people. One thing that, um, that we're, we're interested in is the pilots and you're part of mayors for a guaranteed income. I'll come on to that in a moment. Who's funding the pilots? Have you got support from elsewhere or is it city funds that you're using? Yeah, so this, our pilot was funded by the Economic Security Project, um, funded by Chris Hughes, um, who gave them a million dollars for disbursements. And then we raised another million dollars for like the research and the staffing, et cetera. But what we've seen in the States with CARES Act dollars, our federal response to COVID, is that mayors and cities are using the money directly to help residents. So in Stockton, although not part of this pilot, we just announced um, income relief. So we're giving um, cash grants to people who have lost some of their funding because of COVID-19. And St. Paul, Minnesota is, is launching a pilot where the first three months will be paid for from CARES Act funding, which is exciting. Now, the, it, it's not the answer to everything, of course. You've got bigger programs in, in Stockton. Watching the, the film about you, which I, I mentioned at the end, which I do encourage people to see, um, you have a very extensive education program. This, this guaranteed in income is not going to replace uh, other forms of social support, is it? Yeah, I, my, my position has been and will be that a guaranteed income has to supplement our existing social station and not replace it. And I say that because if in the status quo, some people need more help than others, I'm not sure how that's solved by getting rid of all help and then giving everyone the same amount of help. help. That's not equity. And equality is, is not necessarily just the goal, but equity has to be the goal. And, and that's why I think that we have to make sure that we add on to the existing social safety net so that folks are able to build the resilience so they may not need those programs eventually. And when it comes to, if, if say, it came to full implementation, would you see this as a universal benefit or, or as a targeted benefit? I think uh, the goal is definitely universality, uh, for sure. But just given politics and resources, if we can't get to universality, I am more than fine with the guaranteed and targeted because the difference for me is that universal goes to everyone, including the people who we don't need it, but guaranteed makes sure that the people who need it absolutely get it. And for me, that's my priority. Um, Bill Gates seems like a nice guy, whether he gets this or not, I'm not too concerned with, but for my folks who are working two jobs, I definitely want to make sure that they receive the benefit. So whatever is the quickest way to get it to the folks who need it is what I'm supportive of. And one of the key messages I found reading about your fantastic work there is about getting money into the hands of people quickly and they know how best to spend it generally. Yeah, and it's funny, Andrew, because that was not a frame I had coming into this job, to be frank. I was a little bit worried. When we, Because, um, I mean, you're taught all these things and you're, no one's immune to the messaging and the media and the way we talk about people in, 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 in the States, but also globally. Um, so I was nervous. And then before we disturb, distributed money, we did a, a listening session, a bunch of those. And I remember being mar marveling because I could not anticipate how people would spend their money. That everyone I talked to had a different way how the money would help. And that was real humbling and eye-opening for me. Like, oh, wow. You need to trust your people. You trust them enough to elect you. You should trust them enough to make the right decisions for themselves and their family. And that's not to be naive. We know 100% of people aren't going to spend money 100% um, the way they quote unquote should. But I can't think of anti-intervention, anything 
in society where 100% of people do everything right. <laughs> That's just not the world we live in. So Now, you're not only running this pilot scheme and, and being mayor of the city, but you're also the founder of Mayors for a Guaranteed Income. Who, who makes up the, the Mayors for a Guaranteed Income? Because you've got some very powerful places behind it, haven't you? Yeah, the Mayors for Mayor Guaranteed Income is a national organization of mayors who are saying, we want a guaranteed income policy in this country, and we're willing to pilot it in our cities. So you have um, the mayor of St. Paul, Minnesota, which will be the second city to pilot. Um, you have the mayor of Newark, New Jersey, the mayor of LA, the mayor of Atlanta, the mayor of Philadelphia, the mayor of Pittsburgh, the mayor of Seattle, the mayor of Tacoma, um, the mayor of Jackson. You just have mayors from across the United States who are saying now is the time um, for a guaranteed income. So I'm excited ab about the work because I understand that in the States, mayors have a unique perspective and a unique voice because we're problem solvers. That we're not making speeches all day. We're not pontificating and fighting all day, but we're actually trying to solve real structural issues. Now, some of the, the criticisms leveled against this, and we have the same criticisms leveled here, is A, that it's, it's wasteful because it's universality, means that some people will get it who don't need it, although often the taxation system solves that. Another, I noticed you, you've been criticised by trade unions who feel that this isn't going to deliver the, the well-paid jobs that are needed. How, how do you react to these? Yeah, I, I think, again, there's not one policy that solves all issues. And I, I agree with my friends in the trades that we need good paying jobs. That, that, that part of the issue um, is that jobs aren't paying what they should. But I don't think those are in conflict. I, I know there's so many people who are in the labor force who choose, for example, to do caregiving or domestic work or to stay at home with their kids who a good paying job is going to get their, them and their family money, right? So I think um, they're complementary strategies, but a guaranteed income has to be part of the conversation, as well as good paying jobs, universal health care. Um, like I'm not, I'm not opposed to a job guarantee. I think a job guarantee is a good thing. Um, I think a job guarantee solves for a specific set of problems. I think a guaranteed income is a complement to that. Now, one of the, 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 the great people who inspired you is Martin Luther King in this. This, this is not a, a new idea. But, but you, I saw that um, you'd commissioned artists to celebrate both Dr. King and the idea of a guaranteed income in Stockton itself. Yeah, absolutely. I learned about guaranteed income from studying Dr. King in college. Um, many people don't know, but in 1967, before he died, he wrote, where do we go from here? Chaos Our Community. He talks about the need for a guaranteed income. And this is 50 years ago. <laughs> like, um, so... I, it's in his, his belief in, in one that I share is the inherent universal dignity of all people um, that this basic income demonstration arises from. So we have wonderful art projects commissioned by the great, and actually I was, it wasn't my idea to art. I'm, I'm very, some, sometimes too linear a thinker. <laughs> so I was like, who cares about a painting? Like, let's, let's focus on the policy. But thankfully the economic security project and um, Suki Samra, who runs our program in Stockton, didn't listen. And so those would be cool too. So now we have three murals um, throughout the city that speak to guaranteed income, why it's important and, and, it, and it's a, adds beauty and, vi and vibrancy to our downtown. Now your pilot is coming to an end when is it? So good. Um, I want to say January or February next yeah. year. Yeah. So by then you'll have some really useful data and findings that you can share with us. What's next after that? How, do, how you know, will this become a, a major platform of, a, of an American political party, do you think? It, it absolutely has to, Andrew. Um, and and I, <laughs> I know we're in the midst of an election now, but I don't care. This has to be part of the 21st century New Deal. It has to be um, what it means to be, a, I would argue, a civilized society, particularly one that doesn't have the social supports that other social democracies have, namely healthcare. Um, and luckily for us, the vice president on the Democratic ticket, Kamala Harris, has already shown her willingness um, to embrace these concepts. She wrote about the Stockton pilot in her book. Um, she has she created the Lift Act while a senator that would create five hundred dollars a month of the tax code. She's calling for a COVID nineteen guaranteed income with Senator Sanders, and she's going to be the vice president hopefully. And 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 so. I'm hopeful in the first hundred days of a Biden-Harris administration, a policy like this is enacted, at least during COVID-19. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Mayor Tubbs. It's been a real pleasure to talk to you about this and we'll be following the whole project with great interest. Good luck with your re-election campaign coming up 
uh, and good luck with the programme as a whole. As a whole. Thank you very Thank much you, for joining Ed. us, Mayor Tubbs. Thank you.